Hello everyone and welcome back to another Project Collidator weather forecast. Today I'll be covering the weather for May 26th of 2024. Uh, no fancy editing in today's video because I do need to get this done pretty quickly. We do have a moderate risk for portions of the Ohio River Valleys and Mississippi River Valleys for southeastern uh, Missouri, northeastern Arkansas, western Tennessee, western Kentucky, southern uh, Illinois. Risks for today do include a 15% tornado risk for the moderate risk region where we are expected to see multiple uh, strong to potentially violent tornado that could be long track again we could definitely see a tornado outbreak for this region for today uh, for damaging wind risk we do have a 45 percent with the possibility of some widespread significant damaging wind gusts creating, uh, getting greater than 75 miles per hour as well as a 45 percent hail risk where we are expected to see uh, some widespread massive hailstones across this region they're going to be uh, anywhere from two to three inches and potentially even greater for tomorrow we do have a pretty big slight risk across the uh, eastern coastline uh, just to the east of the Appal uh, Appalachian Mountains that extends from Alabama Georgia South Carolina North Carolina Virginia West Virginia Maryland Maryland, Delaware, uh, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Risks for tomorrow do include a 5% tornado risk where we could see the potential for a couple of tornadoes, a 15% damaging wind risk where we could see the potential for some scattered damaging wind gusts, and a 15% or 15 hail risk where we could see the potential for some scattered hail. For our day three outlook, we do have uh, two marginal risks, one for uh, Minnesota or Montana into Idaho there where we could see some scattered uh, severe th or some isolated severe thunderstorms as well as a marginal risk for the high plains for eastern New Mexico and western Texas where we could see some isolated severe thunderstorms for a day four day eight outlook it doesn't look like we have anything issued Taking a look at our excessive rainfall forecast for today, we do have a moderate risk for Kentucky and northern Tennessee and two portions of southern Illinois and southeastern Missouri, where we are expected to see some widespread and potentially significant flash flooding for the regions of the moderate risk which is definitely another big risk on top of our uh, risk for some significant severe thunderstorms. For tomorrow, we do have a small slight risk for eastern Pennsylvania, parts of New Jersey, and uh, portions of southern New York there, where we could see some scattered flash flooding. And then for our day three outlook, we do have a slight risk for Texas and southern Oklahoma, where we could see the potential for some scattered flash flooding on our day three. Taking a look at our high-resolution ensemble forecast, for today, we do have... A pretty powerful 5 form the bar jet that is pushing out of the west here. Uh, that did lead to quite a lot of uh, severe thunderstorms uh, that have since moved out into the Appalachian regions. And uh, quite a lot of morning convection is definitely a pretty big player in our risk for severe thunderstorms. And it, as it definitely did lead to quite a lot of uncertainty. However, uh, we are getting another big pulse here uh, as our storms move eastward. Uh, with a pretty strong 5 form the bar jet here. That is going to push out of the west upwards of um, uh, what seems to be around 60 to 65 miles per hour uh, vecting out of the west. That's definitely going to support our risk for severe thunderstorm support quite a lot of lift as well as quite a lot of speed here for our risk for hail. And that's going to support our severe thunderstorms. But again, as previously mentioned, we did have some morning convection, some morning time storms. They left kind of a little bit of a cold pool, kind of pushed out a little bit of instability. So uh, that did lead to some uncertainty as far as... Um, our uh, moisture return in the recovery of our atmosphere. Uh, however, I guess a lot of those uncertainties are beginning to be worked out here because uh, our tornado potential was increased uh, recently. Taking a look at our low-level jet and how that's going to affect our risk for tornadoes and our directional shear, we are expected to see a pretty powerful low-level jet that is pretty strong as of right now, or, or was strong previously. However, it is expected to strengthen back up again uh, with our low-level jet that could potentially reach upwards of uh, 40 to potentially 45 miles per hour across this region, or 45 knots, uh, that's definitely going to support quite a lot of directional shear across this region and definitely be pretty supportive of a tornado risk. Taking a look at our 200 millibars and how that's going to affect our speed share and our risk for hail, as well as our overall risk for severe thunderstorms with the spreading of our wind vectors, uh, we are expected to see a decently strong 200 millibar jet that is going to be pushing out of the west here with 200 millibar flow that is expected to get upwards of 70 knots to potentially 80 knots uh, further down to the south in northern Arkansas and southern Missouri to portions of western Tennessee and western Kentucky. Honestly, not really too strong as far as 200 millibar flow. Uh, it does look like we definitely have a little bit of noticeable defluence aloft. It is very, very subtle, so I doubt that it's really going to aid in much, but it is definitely there uh, in we will see some decent speed share, but the majority of our will, uh, majority of our work for our speed share will be done by our five hundred, our five hundred millibar jet. 
taking a look at our uh, compository reflectivity as well as our various model members and how those are going to line up for our uh, risk for severe thunderstorms in our radar analysis. Uh, as of right now, our uh, the, the majority of our morning convection has mostly moved out of the region and uh, we are expected to see uh, more additional development with a uh, primary line that is going to push to the south. Uh, across the Kentucky uh, in uh, the moderate risk region. Definitely going to be overall more favorable for the risk for damaging wind gusts with the possibility of some strong to violent embedded tornadoes. As of right now, this risk has officially started as a couple of discrete supercells that are firing across uh, central and southern Missouri. Uh, we do have a PDS tornado watch across this region. A lot of these uh, uh, discrete supercells are definitely pretty capable of the potential for some pretty strong tornadoes, potentially violent tornadoes as well. However, uh, when it turns into more of a linear mode, again, strong tornadoes will still be able to be embedded along that line. However, it will definitely be overall more favorable for some strong damaging wind gusts, but still don't, don't negate that tornado risk. Uh, again, still some uncertainty with our uh, morning convection and how that may affect our risk for severe thunderstorms. Our HRW and SSL uh, agrees with that more linear mode and storms kind of initially starting as a little bit more discrete. Uh, our HRW, ARW kind of agrees with that as well as it's going to be a little bit more of a linear. Majority of storms are, or majority of models have been indicating this being a little bit more of a linear system, except for our um, AR six hour, uh, where it does start off as a more of a discrete mode, much more prominently, and then rapidly organizes into that more linear system. Again, that more linear system will be more uh, favorable for the potential of some strong damaging wind gusts, but again, do not negate that tornado risk. Taking a look at our dew points and how that's going to affect our instability, uh, we are expected to see quite a lot of moisture across this region with dew point values that are expected to get upwards of 70 to potentially, uh, uh, I think, 73.5 across this region. Uh, definitely quite a lot of moisture across this region that will definitely be pretty supportive of some pretty strong instability across this region and will definitely be able to fuel our, uh, our severe thunderstorm. Taking a look at our temperatures and how that's going to affect our instability, uh, the majority of the linear mode will probably take place more so at our golden hour to more of a nocturnal event, uh, but we'll definitely have some time where we will have some pretty decent surface heating across this region. So uh, for the beginning of the risk, we will see quite a lot of heat with temperatures that could potentially reach upwards of the mid 80s and the low 80s across this region. Um, on top of the really high dew point values that will definitely support quite a lot of instability across this region and will be more than sufficient fueling our severe thunderstorms. By the time the sun does fully set we lose the majority of that surface heating, uh, our temperatures are expected to drop down to the mid, uh, mid and low 70s across this region, but still will be able to fuel our severe thunderstorms on top of our uh, really high dew point values. Taking a look at our lab stories and how that's going to affect our instability and our overall risk for hail, we are expected to see some pretty decently strong lab rates across this region with lab rates that are expected to get upwards of the mid-7s uh, ahead of our line of storms. That will broaden the uh, sector for hail development and will allow for overall a greater risk for hail across this region. Um, and... Uh, this will also allow for quite a lot of instability across this region as well as uh, these really high, uh, uh, these really high, these really decent lapse rates values will definitely be a major aid in our instability across this region and our overall robustness and our uh, overall risk for severe thunderstorms. Taking a look at our most unstable cape and how that's going to fuel our severe thunderstorms in general, uh, we are expected to see quite a lot of most unstable cape across this region with uh, cape values that are expected to get upwards of the uh, the mid 3000s and even the low 4000s for a small corridor here across Arkansas into southern uh, Missouri. This will uh, even potentially be a little bit more uh, broader as well with more widespread uh, cape values getting upwards of the low 4000s as our uh, high resolution ensemble forecast typically does uh, play on more of the conservative side. So we could definitely see much higher la or mu much higher cape values across this region. And again, these are more than sufficient in fueling our risk for severe thunderstorms and will fuel strong updrafts and the potential for significant tornadoes and even violent tornadoes that could be long track. Our risk for our massive hailstones greater than three inches uh, and our risk for some pretty significant damaging wind gusts. Taking a look at our surface-based cape and how that's going to fuel our risk for surface-based storms. Uh, not really too many complaints here. It does look like the majority of our uh, most unstable cape is expected to, to translate down to our surface, meaning that uh, storms are expected to be surface-based across this region. No complaints uh, as far as uh, convective inhibition really as well. Uh, when we do lose that surface heating, 
and storms move towards the southern half of the moderate risk. Uh, we will see a little bit lower, uh, most stable cape values, but still definitely more than sufficient in fueling our risk for surface-based storms across this region. Again, tornadoes are definitely possible for today, uh, and our surface-based cape is there to support it. Taking a look at our 0 to 3 kilometer instability and how that's going to aid in fueling our overall risk for severe thunderstorms across this region, we are expected to see some pretty strong 0 to 3 kilometer instability values across this region, with 0 to 3 kilometer instability values that are expected to get upwards of the low to mid uh, 100s across this region. Uh, definitely pretty strong to moderate and will definitely aid quite a lot in fueling our severe thunderstorms, especially with that strong low level jet. Uh, this 0 to 3 kilometer instability at the surface will definitely be a really large aiding factor in supporting our risk for a strong to potentially violent tornadoes across this region. Taking a look at our energy helicity index values and how that's going to indicate our tornado risk, we have some really high energy helicity index values across this region. Energy helicity index values that are expected to get upwards of the 9s and potentially even the 10s across this region ahead of our storm sets, uh, really indicative of our risk for tornadoes. Uh, we do have a little bit of, of a elevated mix layer that could potentially uh, be more of a limiting risk, but is probably going to lead to overall more explosive storms. Definitely have a really deep moist layer that extends above uh, 850 millibars and gets really close to 700 millibars. Uh, a lot of uh, curvature in the low levels of holograph. Uh, very large amounts of um, storm relative felicity uh, with 400 meters squared a second squared of storm relative felicity. Our SDP is literally at the top of the chart here and very large amounts of instability as well. Definitely a really, really big uh, indicator for our uh, risk for tornadoes. Definitely s s very indicative of a uh, tornado outbreak across this region. Uh, so again, definitely don't negate that tornado risk, even if it is going to be a little bit more of a linear setup later on. Taking a look at our um, our STP and our significant tornado perimeter and how that's going to indicate the risk for significant tornadoes across this region, uh, we are probably not going to see significant tornado perimeter values that are going to be more in line with what we just saw in our energy helicity index values because this is the high resolution ensemble forecast and it is typically uh, more conservative as you do know, but we have some really high uh, significant tornado perimeter values that were pretty similar to yesterday uh, on our high resolution uh, ensemble forecast with a uh, STP values that are expected to get upwards of four to even some sixes in some regions could even be approaching seven to even eight. Definitely some really high significant tornado perimeter values that are very indicative of the potential for some significant uh, significant tornadoes and potentially even violent tornadoes as well. Again, if this is more of a linear system, which it likely will be, that's what the majority of models have agreed to, do not negate that tornado risk. Everything is in place to support significant to violent tornadoes. Taking a look at our uh, the wind gust models and how that's going to indicate the potential for damaging wind gusts. Again, we do have a 45% risk for damaging wind gusts, and you can already tell that we are expected to see some pretty widespread damaging wind gusts that could potentially be significant. It doesn't really pick it up here on our high-resolution high ensemble forecast, but wind gusts are getting upwards of at least 60 miles per hour in some regions on our high-resolution ensemble forecast. Uh, so... Uh, definitely very widespread damaging wind gusts, and because the high-resolution ensemble forecast is definitely a little bit more conservative, we are expected to see damaging wind gusts that could potentially be greater than 75 miles per hour across this region, potentially even reaching uh, 80 as well. Taking a look at our large hail parameter and our various hail parameters on our mesoanalysis page for our risk for hail, uh, we have some really high large hail parameter values across this region, uh, uh, across this region, reaching upwards of 24, 28, uh, even 32 in some regions. Uh, definitely indicating the risk for large hail that the majority of our ingredients for hail have been coming together and overlapping pretty well, and definitely indicating that risk for large hail. For a significant or significant hail parameter, we do have upwards of three to potentially even uh, four in some regions that are uh, definitely very indicative of our risk for some uh, significant hail. SARS hail size indicates uh, upwards of four inches across this region with some room for improvement where it could potentially get even larger in some regions, potentially even upwards of five inches may be possible. It's a very isolated locations. Um, and for our significant hail percentage, we do have upwards of a 90% in southern uh, southeastern uh, um, uh, Missouri, they're pretty widespread, 90%, even uh, two areas where it does reach upwards of 100%. So definitely very, very indicative of the potential for some significant widespread large hail. 
Now that I've told you the weather, please go down to the description and check out the socials for Project Cloud Eater and join the Discord for any updates on Project Cloud Eater. If you live in any of the areas I covered for today, please stay weather alert for the time being. If you notice anything might have been wrong this forecast or like to make a suggestion or ask a question, please leave a comment. Three other channels I highly suggest you check out are One Nation Weather, Weather Watcher, and Jackson WX, and hopefully I'll be able to see you guys tomorrow with another forecast. As far as the live stream goes, I probably will not go live today. I do have uh, stuff that is playing and I was honestly not expecting a 15% tornado risk. Uh, and and I just genuinely can't really fit it into my schedule. Uh, I probably won't go live. I may do a live stream if something significant does happen that needs to be covered. But if you do live in the Vector region, there are going to be area. There are going to be YouTubers that will be covering it. There definitely will be areas that, uh, or diff definitely people that will be doing live stream coverage. So please check those out if you are worried about our severe thunderstorms for today. But hopefully uh, you guys have a good day, and I'll hopefully see you guys in another forecast.